Okay, today we're doing a rear wheel bearing on an 03 Camry, Toyota Camry with uh, rear wheel disc brakes. So we're going to jack it up, uh, remove the wheel, and back in one minute. Okay, so the wheel's off, parking brake's off. There are two 14 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper assembly in. Um, so you got the whole caliper assembly here. There's two 14 millimeters. There's one here and one on the bottom in front of this 17 millimeter nut that holds uh, uh, the caliper slider on. So you have to take those two off. And I've already loosened them. A regular socket's not going to move in there if you have one of these bent shaft spark plug sockets. Um, the bent shaft in them, they're a lot easier to get around and get in there with the rotating head. Um, things can save your bacon a lot of the times. So anyway, I'm just going to remove these two 14 millimeter bolts and I will be back as soon as that's done. There's no sense you watching me take two bolts off. Just a waste of your time. Okay, I'll take those two bolts off and be back in a minute. Okay, now the caliper's unbolted, but as usual, this ridge of rust that forms around the edge of a rotor almost always makes it hard to pull the caliper off, so I'm just going to tap it. Backing off. Check the pads while I'm in there, might as well. They seem okay. And I'm going to hang the caliper up out of the way because you don't want to wreck the hose. So I'll hang the caliper from the coil spring. And pop the rotor off. These parking brake pads look a little bit worn. Okay. So there's two holes in the, uh, let's see if you got that dead on. I'll try to give you a better angle. So now there's two holes in the, uh, in the, the hub assembly with the, with the um, wheel studs on it that allow you to reach the bolts that back and bolt the, uh, the entire bearing and hub onto the, uh, to the rear spindle. You can hear spinning that. I don't know if you can hear all that airplane going overhead. Give me one second for it to go away. So you can hear that. That's not sounding good. So anyway, back in one second. I'll wait for that plane to go away so I can film better. Okay, plane's gone. Um, so what I'm using here is a deep 14 millimeter socket on a 3 8 inch wrench because a, a half inch drive uh, socket is probably not going to fit through there. Uh, it would be a lot easier than I could use air tools, but uh, anyway. So we're just going to insert it through and you'll see there's four bolts. You can see them through the when you look through the hole. I'm not going to look down there because that will be in your way. Insert them through. It through. There's four of them. And then... Oops. Wow, these suckers are tight. Crap. Let's try another one first. I haven't sprayed any penetrating fluid on them yet, which I should do, but it's uh, a bit tough to get in there, and I don't want to hit the... I don't want to hit the... Um, the brake shoes with penetrating fluid. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to spray some light in there. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm just spraying. I've sprayed penetrating fluid. I'm waiting for it to soak in. Um, spray through the hole onto the front of the bolt. If you get some on the pads, you're just going to have to use a brake cleaner to clean them off. And on the back, you'll see where the bolts protrude. I'm going to spray a bit on there. Um, it's fairly these, uh, these bolts are exposed to the elements out the back of the... Um, I don't know if I can show it to you or not. Let's see if I can get you around back in there. There's caliper up out of the way. And I don't know if you can see those bolts protruding through. The caliper stay there for one minute. See one right there? Where it's coming back through, the thread's coming through. So we're going to be spraying back there in a second. We're going to have to let it sit for 
20 minutes or so to absorb through. So I'm going to spray those and be back in a minute. Okay, so the penetrating fluid has worked for a while. And the top two are a little more stubborn, so I squirted them again, and I'm waiting a few more minutes to work on them. show you this one bolt come out because I'm sure you don't want to watch all four being unscrewed. It's a waste of your time as I've said before. So there's the lower nut. See how much rust is on that. So we're gonna clean those up on a uh, on the bench grinder on a wire wheel before we put them back in. But uh, anyway that's the lower nut. I don't know if the uppers and lowers are uh, same size or not. Um, I don't think they are. It looks like the top ones might be shorter, but uh, either way, we're going to remember which ones these are until we've got all four pulled out. We can compare them because we don't want to mix them up. So I'm going to pull all four of these bolts out, and when that's done, I'll be back. Okay, this is four hours of hell later. The four bolts came out fine for the uh, bearing mount. Try removing this bearing <laughs> from... It just it it just bolts onto this flange here on the back of the uh, the brake backing plate. It just bolts on and slips through here. The rust and crud holding an eight year old bearing. Uh, well, how old is the car? Well, eight, nine, nine, ten years old. Ten years old on. This took five hours to remove. It had to be sliced off with a grinder, heated up a million times, pounded to rat shit to take out. I had to remove the rear brakes, uh, the the parking brake assembly. Um, it all had to come off because of poor, poor, sh I'm going to say shitty design, and it is. It's absolute horrid, horrid design that this wasn't coated in some type of uh, release agent or anti-seize from the factory. Absolutely horrid design. It's a wheel bearing. It's designed to be replaced. It should be able to pull off. It should be a 25-minute job, for God's sakes. Um, <sighs> that being said, the original plate that backed off uh, on the back of here. Just a metal cap, um, tin cap basically. It had rot rested through and water had gone back here and destroyed the bearings. That's what happened. That's why the bearing went. <clears throat> After only a hundred and, I think the car's got about 110,000 kilometers on it. So yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous. The amount of work it took to pull to remove this rear bearing carrier. Uh, it's, it's, a f it's four bolts and it should just pop right off. But uh, I blame this on the factory for mounting it that way. How the hell? Why the hell would you mount metal to metal? I'm sorry, I'm ranting because it pisses me off. This should have been, like I said, a 45-minute job that ended up taking uh, five to six hours um, to get to this point. Um, <laughs> again, the brake backing is... It's not attached to the brake backing assembly once you... Once the bolts are through, they're just... The, 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 it just bolts through, bolts to the, the, the hub carrier here. Um, you can see the four bolts in the hub carrier that bolts it through, bolts through this. This just slips through and holds on, but because of poor frickin' design, um, it's just allowed to rust and rot itself in place. It should have been uh, should have been built better from the factory. Absolutely horrible. So I'm going to go back to, you know, if you're living in a sunny sunny climate, uh, you may not have that problem. Um, I shouldn't have had this, but this shouldn't have been a problem. Anyway, I'm going to put the brakes back together, put everything back together as it was, and just go back to the point where we pulled the hub carrier off, took the four bolts out, and slipped it off. That's where we ended before, uh, five hours later, or earlier, but uh, that's where we should be now because we're just replacing a bearing. I'm not doing a rear brake video. I'm not doing blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I'm going to put those things back, and we'll be back in a few minutes to actually bolt a bearing assembly on. Okay, hoping there's still enough light here for you after going through all this crap. So to make sure that doesn't happen, whoever has to work on this again, I'm going to coat this in uh, metal paste, release all, NTCs, whatever you want to call it. Okay. 
because that was utter and complete BS. Now, another thing I'm going to mention, I'm going to coat the inside of the hub here too. When you get your new hub assembly, whether you've got ABS or not, you're going to have the ABS sensor on the back, as you can see the plastic cap on the back. Um, I'll put this down for a second. So you can see where the hole in the hub, or in the spindle where the ABS sensor will go through. So it's just going to mount on like that. So you're just going to take your brake disc. I'm going to have to, I've got a little dent in this thing from banging it around all day today. I'm going to have to bang that out. You're just going to simply slip the new bearing through, line it up. It's going to be a bit of a pain to hold and line everything up. Quite a bit of a pain to line up. Hold on a second. I'm trying to do this without getting in your way. I'm filming this. Okay, rotate a bit in there. Okay. And, because they're kind of... Sorry for shoving my face in the camera. Because they're kind of tight. You may have to tap it in a little bit that's a seat in there this is a bit of a pain to line up I'm telling you right now it's a that this should be able to be retained on the car and then you bolt the the hub on to have to pull this off and do it one bolt it is it's honestly it's ridiculous <laughs> It really and truly is remarkable that they engineered it this way. Like, just piss poor. Okay, so we got one bolt through. And we're going to try and line this one up, which is the top one at the back. that it matters, line up whichever one you can line up. Take your 14 mil and just try and gently thread it in. Once you get one, you should be golden. You should be able to line the other ones up. I think that is there. So we're now simply going to put the other four line up the other four bolts. They said this is a uh, this is a stupidly fiddly way of doing this. I, I really really am shocked how badly this is designed. <laughs> hey I'm no car engineer but I work on them. I know when bad is bad. When I see bad I know it. <laughs> That is basically anything that is a bitch to work on. Okay, so we're just going to put all four, excuse my dropsies, <laughs> won't stay in there, all four bolts back on again through the access hole here. Uh, the biggest bitch of this job is removing the hub from the uh, the brake brake backing plate and carrier. Other than that, it's dead simple. If it was, uh, th this should be, uh, like I said, it should be a half hour job. If you've got the, uh, if it doesn't come out, or if it does come out properly, it should be no more than a half hour job. So I'm going to put the rest of these bolts in, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I got all four bolts in. I'm just basically tightening them up. You're going to tighten them 
in order to pull this whole barrier uh, hub and everything through the carrier and make sure it seats properly in the back, squarely in the back, uh, tighten them bit by bit, side to side, uh, in like a father, son, holy ghost, you know, the, the cross thing, how you do it when you're tightening a four bolt uh, weir bolt. So here, across, and then top, then bottom, and just alternate back and forth. So you're pulling it straight into the that carrier piece on the back of the spindle. I had to replace one of the bolts because it was pretty nasty with the same bolt with a 13 millimeter head. So you gotta switch sockets back and forth. Um, that's about it. I think these are tightened to 50 pounds. I am going to check before I do the final tightening, but um, I will uh, let you know. I'll put the uh, I'll put the torque spec in the uh, well, right up here somewhere in the in the video. I'll put an annotation up there with the torque spec on it. But after this is done, it's basically throw your throw your brake rotor and uh, your brake disc and caliper back on, and uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for enduring. <laughs>